This video is about how to install Ubuntu 22.04 Long-Term Support Desktop or Jammy Jellyfish into VirtualBox. Now, each time Ubuntu comes out with a new version of their Long-Term Support Desktop, and I make a video on it, I always have to mention where Ubuntu comes from. Ubuntu is a mostly open source and free operating system based on Debian Linux. The word Ubuntu comes from the Zulu language. Archbishop Desmond Tutu from South Africa explained it this way. One of the sayings in our country is Ubuntu, the essence of being human. Ubuntu speaks to the fact that you can't exist as a human being in isolation. It speaks about interconnectedness. You can't be human all by yourself. And when you have this quality, Ubuntu, you are known for your generosity or kindness. Outcomes? You should have the following outcomes from this video. Download Ubuntu 22.04 Long-Term Support Desktop. Configure VirtualBox Guest Operating System for Ubuntu. Install Ubuntu 22.04 LTS Desktop into VirtualBox. Update Ubuntu. And install VirtualBox Guest Editions into Ubuntu. Requirements for the host computer administrative privileges. 64-bit multi-core processor. Minimum of 6 gigabytes of RAM. I recommend at least 8 gigabytes of RAM. An internet connection. Virtualization hardware support. And VirtualBox 6 Plus install. For the Ubuntu desktop guest computer. Two cores of a multi-core processor. 4 gigabytes of RAM. 25 gigabytes of storage. VGA capable of 1024 by 768 screen resolution. And that's also required, the host computer. Additional info. The next three slides contain additional sources of info, a list of the software used in making this video, and a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop this video to read the slides. Here I am at the Ubuntu desktop download page, ubuntu.com slash download slash desktop. And I'm going to download Ubuntu Desktop in order to install it into VirtualBox. I'd like to point out one thing, though. The Ubuntu 22.04 LTS release notes and the recommended system requirements. 2 GHz dual-core processor, or better. 4 GB system memory, 25 GB of free hard space. And I'll talk about this a little bit more later. So anyway, we'll go down and... Download it. And on my computer, I've got a place for it to be downloaded. And you can set your computer to download it wherever you want to or take the default from Windows. And it's Ubuntu 22.4 Desktop AMD 64 ISO. And click Save. And you'll notice down here in the bottom left, you will see that it pops up and it will tell you when it's downloaded. I'll come back when it's fully downloaded. When you don't see the timer anymore, that means that it's fully downloaded. Okay, in this section I'm going to create a virtual machine to run Ubuntu 22.04 on. So I go up here to the top left where it says machine, click on it, click new, and I'm going to give my machine a name. You can give it whatever name you want. Base Ubuntu 22.04 DT for desktop. I'm going to give it a location. Other, VM storage, this is where I put all my, and I've already created a folder for it before, but you can follow through and just do this and select a folder, and that's where it's going to go. Operating system is Linux. Version is going to be Ubuntu, 64-bit. Uh, you got to make sure that you have 64-bit, not 32-bit, because... 22.04 doesn't come with 32-bit as far as I know. Click Next. Now the recommended memory size, if you remember from the uh, specifications or recommendations, was 4096 or 4 gigabytes of RAM. Click Next. We're going to create a hard disk. Create. Use the default. Next. And dynamically allocated. Basically, Dynamically allocated means that when you first start up, it's only going to take about 5, 8 
gigabytes of storage space. And then it will increase as you add more software to your virtual machine. Click Next. And if you recall, it recommended 25 gigabytes of storage space. So that's what we're going to go with. And you want to have a little bit to play with all this free software on Ubuntu. Click Create. But we've still got some settings to go to. We'll go to General. And Advanced here. And we'll go to Shared Clipboard. Bidirectional. And drag and drop. Bidirectional. That way, after you add guest additions, you'll be able to paste from your host operating machine to your guest operating machine or the Ubuntu machine. Click OK. One other thing I have to go back to system. If you recall, for processor, it asks that it have two CPUs, dual core. So we're going to give it two CPUs or dual core right here. And there it says two. Click OK. And display. We're going to play with the display a little bit. We're going to enable 3D acceleration. And then we're going to give it as much display as we can. And what that does is hopefully it'll make the video run a little bit faster, depending on what kind of video processor you have on your host operating system. Click OK. And in storage, we've got to go see where it says this empty CD. We've got to go find where we downloaded our CD. You can choose a disk file and that will find where you downloaded. In my case, I've already found it right here. And that's because I've been practicing a little bit before. And it's Ubuntu 22.04 Desktop AMD 64 ISO. And you have to remember where you download it, unless you have a specific place for all your downloads. And click OK. And that's pretty much it for getting your uh, virtual machine set up to run Ubuntu 22.04. Okay, the next step is to install Ubuntu 22.04 into the virtual machine that you've just created. And here it is, Base Ubuntu 24.04 DT for desktop. And I'll click on it or double click on however it works for your host machine. And it's going to start. And here it is starting. And you've got a number of choices here. In our case, it's going to be Try or Install Ubuntu. Hit Enter. And it's flipping out of the screen a little bit here, so I'm just going to constantly bring it back in. After about a minute and a half, we're going to install Ubuntu. Now you've got a choice of languages that you're going to use. In my case, it's going to be English, and this is just a scroll up and down. And then I'm going to click on Install Ubuntu. And in my case, the keyboard layout is going to be English US. And then in English US, you have a number of different choices. And I'm going to stick with English US. Now you'll notice right here, you don't get the complete button, but don't worry about that. We'll get everything straightened out later. Click continue. And what apps would you like to start with? Normal installation. And other options. I'm going to select install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats so that we get as much use out of Ubuntu as we can. Then click continue again. Then it comes to the installation type. And we're just going to take the default erase disk and install Ubuntu. Basically, that means erase that virtual hard disk that you've created in VirtualBox, not the hard disk in your host machine. We're just going to take the default here and click Install Now. And write the changes to the disks. And we're going to click Continue. And then this is asking you for your timeline, what's your uh, standard time. And then click Continue. I've got New York here, which is Eastern Standard Time in the United States and Canada. Ask for a name. You can put whatever you want right here. Computer's name. In my case, I'm just going to call it Base Ubuntu 2004DT. And I'm going to choose a password. Now, you should really choose a more difficult password than I'm choosing because unless you really are in a situation like me where I create many virtual machines for training purposes and then they get discarded. 
and I don't want to make my password too hard, but the recommended for password is upper and lower case, a special character like dollar or pound, and a number. Don't do as I do. Do as I say. Don't put in a weak password if you're going to do some fancy stuff with this machine. Click Continue. And I'm going to move this again. And right here it's going to take a while to install Ubuntu. And right here it's installing Ubuntu, but let me go over here and this arrow right here. And you'll see that I've got some software, like all this free software that you can pick up. Anyway, you see you've got some free software, and I've used Audacity and I use VLC. So a lot of this software is eminently usable and you get the rhythm box music player you get spotify and of course vlc still well a photo manager i haven't really used that but i've used a gimp image editor there's other imaging software that's available on linux of course firefox and then you've got thunderbird and you can use chrome chromium which is different than google chrome it's a little more secure it doesn't have as many features and LibreOffice. LibreOffice Writer, which is kind of like Word, Calc, which is kind of like Excel, Impress, which is like PowerPoint, and there's even a database one, which is kind of like Access. And then at the heart of the Ubuntu philosophy is the belief that computing is for everyone with advanced accessibility. And that's the slideshow that you can watch and actually read why Ubuntu is being installed. Finally, after about 10-15 minutes of working through the install, you get this little message that pops up. Installation is complete. You need to restart the computer in order to use the new installation. So click on Restart Now. And it says, please remove the installation medium, then press Enter. So basically, all you have to do for this Ubuntu installation, just press Enter, and that will take care of it. And it's going to take a while to restart. Once it's restarted, you'll see this screen. Don't worry about it. We're going to fix and make it larger. And in this case, ask for you to sign in. Go to your online accounts and sign on or not, however you wish. I'm going to skip this. You're going to have to make a decision here whether you would like to send information to Ubuntu. I'm going to Click no because I don't know how long this machine is going to be viable or alive before I make the next one. I normally like to send information to Canonical about Ubuntu. Click next. Privacy. I like to keep my privacy, so I'm just going to leave that. Click next. And here's a list of a lot of different apps that you can put in. I'm going to click done. So the first thing you're going to have to do is update it. And to update it, you go to Show Applications button and type in Software. And you'll see this icon where it says Software Updater. Click on that and check for updates. And it says the software in this computer is up to date. Now, that's because Ubuntu 22.04 just came out yesterday. I'm going to click OK. So actually, after you've updated it, one thing you should do before installing VirtualBox Guest Editions, and that's after that we'll get the big screen, is to restart it. And I'm just going to do a restart just to show. Click Restart. Restart. And when it comes back up, I will show you how to install VirtualBox Guest Editions, even though we really didn't have to restart it currently. Now here, I'm going to be installing Guest Editions. So I click on Mike, put in the password, and after Guest Editions, we'll get a bigger screen. So in this case, before I install Guest Editions, I have to make one change to this machine. We we'll use Control, Alt, and T to get a hold of the terminal. And then I have to type in sudo apt install gcc perl make dash y hit enter it's going to ask for my password again it's going to take a minute or two to install this and it says the application passwords and keys is closed unexpectedly send problem report to developers 
Hmm, not sure exactly what's going on here. Well, look at the details. USR bin Seahorse. Well, I guess there's a problem with a piece of software called Seahorse. So we'll send. But we're going to keep on going. I've tested Ubuntu 22.04 and haven't seen that error message. We could try installing it again. Make sure I've got everything up. So I guess everything seems to be okay there. Now one thing I also like to do is on this terminal, I like to right click and add to favorites. Basically that stays right here from now on. And to install guest editions, I have to go up here to devices, insert guest edition CD image. And then I come over here, click on the image here and up comes all these files. Right click on Auto Run SH because Ubuntu is a Linux system and .sh is like exe in Windows. Then right click on it and it says run as a program. Use that. And again, ask for your password. Okay, now it says VirtualBox guest editions running kernel modules will not be replaced until the system is restarted. Plus return to close this window. I'll hit return. Go up here to sex, close that, and we're going to restart it. Power off, log out, restart, restart. Now guest editions has restarted. Log back in. And expand it, and you can see I've got larger window. If you still have a problem not getting larger window, what you can go up here is to the view, and you can go to uh, scaled mode or adjust window size and click those. If you have scaled mode, make sure to get out of it. You have to use the host, which is the right control key plus C. That's it. So now you have Ubuntu 20.04. But I want to show you one thing before I go. Go to the Ubuntu software. And you've got all this software that you can look at. And here's some sections. Arts and design. Music and audio. Photo and video. I kind of hang around the development section, but you've got all these sections. And in addition, you've got a search button right up here, and you can search for uh, different pieces of software. Like, I'll just say PyCharm, because that's the JetBrains, and you've got all this PyCharm software that you can install. Anyway. That's pretty much it, and thank you for watching my video.